I decided to make this bonus video in case I went too fast on some of this chain rule stuff. So for those of you who are okay with the chain rule, you're happy with what you saw in the first video, you can skip this one if you'd like. But if you're a little bit hesitant still about the chain rule, I wanted to spend a little time going over this in a little more detail to verify why some of these answers are the way they are. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna provide a little bit more room for myself. So I'm gonna cheat using the powers of technology here. How wonderful. Right? And I'm going to do a little bit more work to verify a few of these problems that required the chain rule. All right, so I'm going to first of all do this first one, or I guess B, the first one that required the chain rule here. And I'm going to think about this function as right the inside function. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, the inside function is this 5t right here, right? 2 is being raised to the 5t. So I'm going to think of this u function as 5t, which makes my g function just two to the u, right? And so I'm doing the chain rule here a little bit slower. So if I was to take the derivative of g with respect to u, right, two to the u, well now we can just use the good old exponent rule up here. So the derivative of g with respect to u is gonna be the natural log of two times the function itself, so two to the u. There we go, that's just the exponent rule up here. Times, right, I need to do the derivative of g with respect to u, times the derivative of u with respect to t. So if I did the derivative of u with respect to t, taking the derivative with respect to t, well, this is just a linear function, so that's going to be 5. So therefore, the derivative of g with respect to t is going to be the natural log of 2 times 2 to the u times 5. And so if I was to reorder this, the five I would bring out front, the natural log of two, there we go. And then instead of two to the u, I'm gonna replace everywhere I see a u with a five t. And so you can see in this case, my final answer up here, again, this is a five t, I know it may kind of look like an s, uh, looks the same as the answer right here. So this one's a little bit slower, right? This one's using the chain rule in its full detail. So again, if you're a little bit hesitant, it's fine to do this out, but eventually we want to get you know very good at these things, very fast at them, that you can very quickly identify the inside and the outside function, and you can just get right to it. And hopefully, uh, as you do more of these, you'll be actually doing this first method. Right, This first method is faster, uh, and it's all that's required you know, on my quizzes and exams, things like that. Uh, so you don't need to necessarily do out this long method. But this long method makes more sense, uh, especially when you're first learning it. All right. Let's go ahead and try out one more here, uh, and then maybe I'll do one nat one of the natural log problems, and that'll be good enough. So let's move this over and shrink it a little bit, just so I can provide a little bit more room for myself to work. And I'll switch back to purple here. And the big question is, right, where did this negative come from? The claim is that was the uh, result of the chain rule here. So there's an inside function. That inside function is that there's a negative x. So that u, in this case, is going to be negative x. And then h is going to be 10e to the u. Right? So 10e to the u. So now I can take the derivative of h with respect to u. And the derivative of h with respect to u, well, the constant multiple rule says the 10 is going to be along for the ride. The derivative of e to the u, as we saw down here, is just going to be itself. Remember, now we're treating u as the independent variable. We also know the derivative of u with respect to x. So let's see here, the derivative of u with respect to x, this is a linear function, the slope is negative one. And so according to the chain rule, if you want the derivative of h with respect to x, you're gonna need to multiply these things together. So 10e to the u times negative 1. So I can bring that negative 1 out and combo it with the 10, right, and make negative 10, right, because it doesn't matter in which order you multiply. And then e to the, instead of u, let's go ahead and substitute back in, right, negative x. And so again, you can see that my answer here, the derivative of h with respect to x, is the exact same as the answer over here. But this is using the uh, chain rule in a little bit more detail. Okay, let's do one more, uh, one of these logarithm ones. So I'll do B, I guess, but in order to do that, let me shrink a little bit of stuff here. Let me 
shrink this stuff and just keep it in its area down here. This was our answer to B. Let me go ahead and move this up here, shrink it down a little bit as well. There we are. So, again, the inside function, that's what I'm going to set equal to u. So that's going to be t squared plus t. Okay? Now I can write my g function in terms of u's. So this is going to be log base 1 half of u. Now I can go ahead and calculate out the derivative of g with respect to u using my rule up here. So my base is 1 half, and now I'm taking a derivative with respect to u instead of x, so this is going to be 1 over u times the natural log of whatever the base was, right? So the base is 1 half. Good. The derivative of u with respect to t, that's going to be equal to, and again I'm looking up here, so this is going to be 2t plus the derivative of t is 1. So... If I want the derivative of g with respect to t, I need to multiply these things together. So it's 1 over u, natural log of 1 half, times 2t plus 1. And if I was to rewrite this one last time, right, I would go ahead, right, this is actually a fraction, 2t plus 1 over 1, so I know how to multiply two fractions together. This is going to be 2t plus 1 in the numerator. And then in the denominator, well, 1 times anything is just anything. But instead of u, I'm going to go ahead back here and substitute in t squared plus t. So t squared plus t for u times the natural log of 1 half. And so again, we can see that my answer right here is the same as my answer up here. Right? So that works out the same. Whichever method uh, you understand more, I would stick with that uh, for now. But eventually, like I mentioned, we want to get to this little bit of a faster method, right? Uh, so that way you can do more problems quickly. You can get through quizzes and exams faster. And you can spend a little bit of time checking, right? This is the more detailed method of the chain rule right here. All right. I hope this has been helpful. I will see you guys in class.